mother. I had heard one historian tell Reddit that his mother had died, and I don't know if that's true. Yeah, you, know, you never hear of his parents or anything, or wife. And he was tutored by Gamaliel, which I thought was interesting, because if you go back on the, on the tales of Gamaliel and Hillel, uh, uh, Jewish rabbis that, that tutored students very, like the philosophers, of the, I guess the, the pious ones of that day, they would tutor the rich kids. They were the ones that corrupted the Torah and turned it into the Talmud. Mm. And so now you've got, many years later, their prized student, Paul, going into Christianity and corrupting Christianity. Yeah. There is a link there, if you look at it, because Gamaliel and Hillel were the ones who corrupted the Torah. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of links that I can't put together that just requires so much work. And you know how hard it is to dig for ancient info. Mm. You know, a lot of the stuff I've heard that the Vatican and the vault has a gold mine of information of all the original works <laughs> that they're hiding because they don't want information out. It would change everything. I mean, I mean they made a lot of money off off of purgatory when they had a chance to use that one and and burning. I'd, I'd rather see them take out Paul's writings and put in uh, Jubilees, the Book of Jasper, Enoch. Oh yeah, well Paul Paul was a gold mine for them. People were afraid to death of, of, you know, they had penance off of him. They got purgatory. <laughs> yeah, I, I, either I, way, I had a purgatory. Yeah, I get so sort of tired of Paul going on about his personal problems. I don't know. You know what, even Baptist preachers today, and I've heard them admit this, even though they're lovers of Paul because I think he was forgiven, they'll, they'll, they'll admit or even talk about his, the fact that they believed that Paul was a homosexual. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's... I used to laugh at that, that, that but they're not laughing anymore. But yeah. then they turn around and say, well, he was, he was saved, and he repented, and then he became an apostle. And you know what, that's, a, that, that's possible, but come on. I don't, you know, he goes on and on and on. He's well, the foundation of Satanism is, is homosexuality. That's one of the pillars. Yeah, and it, well, it's also the worship of the penis, Satan's penis. And what does he do? He goes on and on and on and on. Oh, does he ever? He's obsessed. <laughs> you know, and I point this out, and people just think you're crazy. But I mean, there's there's so many passages of his that you have to jump over just because you get tired of hearing it. Yeah. But, but the fact is, we don't need Paul to be saved. Yeah, you don't. You throw Paul out and just read the other books. People often ask, "Well, you're throwing out the whole New Testament." Well, you know what? Most of it's, you know, when you explain the whole scenario of the tree of life, God allowed the tree of life of good and evil, hmm. both trees in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And he tested Adam and Eve, and that's the same thing we have with the KJV today. Yeah, you know, you're tested. Paul is the is the the tree of knowledge of good and evil. People yeah. that can't see and wake up to his deceptions are going to fall in error and stay in errors. Well, you can go to the words of Jesus and get it direct. Yeah, you know my favorite or, parts are just the words in red. Or you can go to Paul's endless commentaries on his life and and, and you know <laughs> of how great he is. Oh, and he always he, talks about how he was the greatest persecutor of Christians at that time, and, and he boasts on and on and on, and not one passage in any one of his 13 occultic books will you find where he actually says he's sorry, or that he <laughs> repented of it. He boasts about it. He's proud of yeah, it. Yeah, no, he never he never shows any remorse for, for what he had done. No, he's proud of it. It's just kind of like, uh, it's, a, it's a real kind of, I don't know, glib uh, way he puts it. Well, follow me as I follow Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I beseech thee to follow me. Why would we follow you, Paul? Why would we just not follow the Lord himself? But, uh, and say, now you have Acts, which is written by uh, Luke, and Luke was his disciple. Luke was his scribe. And and there, what do we have in Acts? Paul this, Paul that, and... Oh, by the way, the apostles. Anyway, back to Paul, you know. <laughs> and, well, it's even in Acts where he has two different accounts. I think it's in the same chapter of his his, his divine revelation on the road to Damascus. Yeah. And they're both completely different, and it's in the same chapter. Two different accounts within the same chapter, and he says, translates them both completely different. No, oh, I, 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 I just, well, I remember because I've been, you know, brought up that way that, that Paul is like, you know, the super apostle. And but I remember I was really devastated for about three or four days. Oh, I was months. It took me a year. When the Lord started showing me this, because when I was growing up, Paul was the only one I paid attention to. 
He was the only one I studied and memorized. I liked the other depart, you know, the other ones. Don't get me wrong, but he was the dominant one. My church always taught. I was. I grew up in Baptist churches. Uh, I loved his stuff in, in Timothy and in Ephesians and Galatians. I mean, I liked all of his books. I didn't like the mm. tongue stuff though. I always had a thing for that. Um, Which he boasts about. He speaks tongues more than yeah. Than all. Uh, but the whole fact is that, that when I started praying for truth and all things, I started seeking the Lord just for truth. Teach me the truth. I'm tired of lies. I'm tired of errors. I want to be in the truth. I don't want to have errors. That was the first thing he revealed to me was about Paul, and it took over a year for me to just just to, to get it through my head and accept it because I even got angry at one point and just walked away for a long time uh, because I just, you know, it was shocking. It was very shocking. But when well, I, I got over it more quickly because people close to me, didn't really freak out. They kind of sensed it, you know. Uh, they didn't, couldn't put it into words, but they sensed it. And they didn't, I didn't feel like I was sitting on one of the world's greatest secret conspiracies, you know. <laughs> I was shocked. I was floored. Oh, I was horrified. I, I just, but I, I, I want to know everything about God. The good, the bad, the ugly. I don't care. I want to throw it at me and I'll deal with it. And I'll get over it, but, you know, the Lord Jesus first, period. Yeah, well, when you start praying for truth, he rattles your box. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I've been down the rabbit hole so many times, I might as well just pack my bags. I know, and I don't like it, it doesn't faze me to be told, okay, you're wrong on this and you're right on that, and keep, you know, there's more information on that, because he, he kind of brings you in a circle. To, yeah. You know, he'll start with something and give you a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit there, and then brings you back to the first thing you showed and give you more on that, expound more on that. He gives you more and more and more each time. Yeah. And so that's pretty much how he's, he's taught me things. Well, the, the churches feel that, 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 that somehow they're magically protected from God, and there's no deception in there. And Well, that was the biggest thing for me, too, because I don't know if, if you're one of these people that like, like, like I will do, and I'll sit and I'll peg him, okay, what really makes you angry? What do you really hate the most, you know? And, and he would tell me the idolatry among his believers, and I couldn't, I'm thinking the idolatry, okay, we're worshiping our cars, we're worshiping our possessions. That was my impression at the time. Okay, so all these people in the churches are worshiping their money and possessions more than they are him. That was my impression for years. And now I'm starting to see that, you know, it's this Sananda they're worshiping, this Pauline Sananda. It's not even the real Jesus. It's not even him, the Son of God, that the churches are worshiping. It's Sananda and Mithraism. Yeah, it's it's a social club called Jesus. Yeah. It's like, let's go out and have a good time and give the Lord a clap offering, <laughs> you know. And, Pay for that anointing. <laughs> yeah, and yet all yeah, over the world, request. all over the world, there's people, I mean, I've had people email me from different parts of the world of what's going on over there. They are, are, are suffering for their faith like you have no idea. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, I think the latest was in Indonesia was... Uh, it, the, the the biggest fad now is to cut Christians' heads off, put them on sticks, and run around town with them. Oh my! Is this the Islams over there? The Muslims? Islams? I always call me Islam. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I mean, Christians are are going through so much. But when you come to this country, hey, I'll offer the Lord a clap offering, and don't you feel good, and don't you love the Lord? And the brothers and sisters are dying around the world. That I, you know, I've, I've been hearing it for years. Uh, you know, I hear from people in all countries, China and Africa, and, and many people suffering for the Lord's name and in the, in the faith. And these are the true brethren. These are the ones who are willing to die for their faith just because they love the Lord. Yeah. Not indoctrinated into all these errors of the churches today, not in worship of Sananda. They just really seek and worship the Son of God and, and the Lord. Exactly. And so we have, it's coming to this country. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come and it's going to hit fast, it's going to hit quick. The Lord's always said, once it starts, it's going to come like a flood. Everything's going to...